your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Miss McBride, I want to put through a long-distance call. Mm, Sure thing, Mr. Norton. I love scaring them long-distance operators. Where to? I want Mr. Victor Carrington at Adams 7600 in Chicago. I'll take it inside. Okay, Mr. Norton. Say that, Mr. Killian. All men are alike. After making all that fuss, I see he ate the sandwich I gave him. (laughs) Hello? Operator, get me Chicago, please. I want to speak to Mr. Victor Carrington at... The circuits are busy? Well, get on your horse and call me. I'll have him in a couple of minutes. Meantime, I'll get after the superintendent downstairs. i got to give him a good piece of my mind. Now, take it easy, Lottie. It's only your first day. I wish I could find those blueprints. They're found. Where are they? You left them at home. Mm. I called up about half an hour ago and spoke to your mother-in-law. Your wife's bringing them over. Well, I'll be hanged. What a treasure. Hello, dearie. I'm calling for Killian and Norton in 912. Are you the superintendent of the building? Oh, that's swell. Now, you listen to me. You've been getting away with murder. But you knew you'd get caught, didn't you? (laughs) First place, we need new window shades. You haven't any? Well, that's all right. We want Venetian blinds anyway. Yeah, and how many years ago were these windows washed? Before what war? Well, I want them washed before Monday. And how about your cleaning women? What do you got them using up here, dearie? The bare hands? <laughs> Say, listen, if you don't like the way I talk to you, you just be sure and get everything done or you'll be hearing from me every day until it is done. Hello. Why, it's you. I don't believe it. I thought you were going to work for Johnson and grow while <laughs> Well, hello, dearie. They were closed. Oh, Oh, say, are you the girl they asked the agency to send up for the new secretary's job? Well, uh... Oh, that's a shame. I grabbed it yesterday. Oh, no, the agency didn't send me. Well, the honey, I... like I said, if the job was right for me, it wouldn't have been right for you. Now, you sit right down there, and I'll just give your agency a little call, and we'll see if they can't send you someplace else. But I'm not from the agency. You see, you, you've you been so nice to me. You haven't even given me a chance to say. Yeah, but if you ain't from the agency, dearie, how come you came up here? What agency is it? But I'm Mrs. Norton. Well, Mrs. Norton, I see you made it. Good morning, Mr. Norton. Well, get this. You're Mrs. Norton. Mm-hmm. Oh, what a handsome couple, as they say. That's one on me. Mr. Norton, I almost got your better hair for job filing carbons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dearie, why didn't you tell me who you were? You never gave me a chance. <laughs> we women sure talk a lot, don't we? It's all right. Men talk a lot more. See you on your way out, Mrs. Norton. I'm working on your Chicago call, Mr. Norton. All right, Lottie. Should be through in a few minutes. They got all the circuits busy. No great hurry, Lottie. Don't scare too many operators. <laughs> Only when they need it, Mr. Norton. Hello. Hello. Have you got them? Got what? The blueprints, of course. David, I have a terrible confession to make. Huh? How terrible is it? It isn't really my confession. It's Bluff's. He's very sorry about the blueprint, but it tasted wonderful. You mean he... he ate them? Oh, only a little piece of one. Some men are hounded by their creditors, but I am hounded by my hound. (laughs) How much did he eat? Here. Better look for yourself. Hmm. Well, that isn't as bad as it might be. He only chewed one of the trees on the sketch. (laughs) Don't be so proud, Miss Fixit. If it had been Lottie's, that the dog wouldn't have dared lick a blade of grass. You mean to tell me Lottie is more efficient than I am? I do. I don't believe it. You know, I thought so, too, the minute I met her in the elevator. Is she the girl you were trying to tell me about yesterday? Of course. The minute I saw her, I said, 
There goes David's secretary. Well, you wouldn't listen to me. Does Roger like her, too? Like her. He's practically mesmerized by her. <laughs> I wonder what's holding her up on that Carrington call. Oh, you're going to tell Mr. Carrington that you're turning him down? I am. I wonder how he's going to feel about it. Oh, he won't feel at all. He'll just go out and get another architect to move to Chicago and build him his freight terminal. But there isn't any architect who can do it aside from you. You can find your remarks to me as a husband. There he is now. How are you going to say it? Hello. Hello, Mr. Carrington. This is David Norton. Yes, they told me you were away. Did you have a nice trip? David, what's he say? Mr. Carrington... Yes, I'm, I'm calling about that freight terminal project. You are? Well, I almost wish you weren't, Mr. Carrington. Oh, no, no. I, I'm still very interested in the whole project of a more effective freight transfer system, but, well, certain things have developed. <laughs> no, no, Mr. Carrington. Your offer was very generous. It's just what I told you. There isn't any other architect. Yes, Mr. Carrington. Well, I know that you want the architect to work directly for you rather than a consultant, and since I've just become a member of this firm, I... No, I don't feel I ought to or want to leave right now. Oh, Mr. Carrington... Yes, well, let me say that I think you're absolutely right in wanting the architect to work for you. Mr. Carrington, hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. Carrington. What happened? What did you say? I didn't say anything. I've been cut off. Now I can't even get Lottie. David, you sit there and watch me explode with curiosity. What did he say? Didn't I tell you you're the only architect in America? Say, who exactly is this Carrington bird? Lottie, I was cut off. Can you get him back for me? Let the gent get himself back. Who is he now? He's a very important man in Chicago. Wanted me to go to work for him. Wanted you? From where I sit, it sounded to me like he wants you out in Chicago this minute. Lottie, did you listen? What did he say? Mr. Norton won't tell me. Listen, would I do a thing like that? I just left my key open. Mm Mm-hmm. What else did you hear? I heard you trying to tell him that he couldn't have you his way. So he'd be better off not to have you at all. That's when I cut him off. Lottie, you cut him off. It was killing me to listen to Mr. Norton. Well, you'd better get him right back again, Lottie. You were so slow, Mr. Norton. It seemed to me like you ought to have a little more time to think things over. Mr. Norton's been thinking about this for weeks. Well, maybe so. Go on, go on, go on, Lottie. Let's hear the rest of it. Well, he sounds like a big butter and egg man, this Carrington gent. Butter and eggs and a lot of other things. Go on. Well, you know how these big timers are. You see them all the time in New York. I was in Chicago for a couple of days one time. And you can take it from me. They ain't no different out there. I'm taking it from you. When they want something, they want you to know that they want it their way. That Then when they can't get it their way, they'll take it any way that they can get it. I see it. what Lottie means. Do you really think so, Lottie? Well, I'm not interested in Carrington unless it means that he hires the firm. Well, I, I I know he doesn't want that. Well, maybe he doesn't want it, but maybe he'll take it. You see what I mean now? No, yeah, I I see, but I don't know. All right. All right, we'll try. You get him back on the phone line. What's the hurry, Mr. Norton? We got all day. Well, let's do it right now. I want to hear what happened. Yeah, we, we know he's in his office now. We wouldn't know about that later. Go ahead. Yeah, try. well, he knows you're in yours, too. What do you mean? Oh, you mean you think he'll call us? I'll give him two minutes. See? The two minutes is up. What do you know? Killian and Norton. Uh, Mr. Norton? May I ask who's calling him, please? Uh, Mr. Carrington? Mr. Norton is here. Please put Mr. Carrington on the line operator. Mr. Norton is right here. Please put Mr. Carrington on the line first. Hello, Mr. Carrington. Are you sure this is Mr. Carrington? Oh, I have Mr. Norton for you, Mr. Carrington. One moment, please. Hello. Hello, Mr. Carrington. Yes, yes, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, we were cut off. Uh, yes, Mr. Carrington, we're very interested in the project, but... Yes, but, but only as a firm. Well, I'm... 
I'm sorry, sir. That's the only way we'll consider it. Say, where is everybody? Shh, Roger. David's talking to Chicago. Who does he know in Chicago? Well, I realize that that isn't how you originally wanted to handle it, Mr. Carrington, but I'm afraid it's the only basis on which we'll consider it. Yes. Yes, of course. We'll be able to come to Chicago for consultations. Well, Mr. Carrington... I suggest you write us a letter, and Mr. Killian and I'll give it our immediate attention. Yes, I, I certainly will, Mr. Carrington. And thank you. Goodbye. He sends you his regards, Claudia. Thank you. I suppose that eventually someone will tell me what's been going on. Roger, we've just got a new job. Really? What is it? Hmm? Victor Carrington, you remember? Out in Chicago. He's commissioning us to do a freight terminal for him. Victor Carrington, Mm -hmm. a freight terminal. The freight terminal? Do you realize what that means? Yes, I think I do. It's the biggest thing we've had in years. It can put us right on the map in raised letters and gold ink. It's tremendous. That's how I feel about it. All on account of that article of yours? Do you mean that, that the telephone rang in the office, you picked it up, and there, like Aphrodite coming out of the surf, was Victor Carrington on the (laughs) other end asking us... To do this job? It was almost like that, Roger. <laughs> it was, huh? Then why did he send his regards to Claudia? Oh, that. He, he didn't mean it particularly. It was just a way of talking. Just a way of... Go- How well do you and Claudia know him? You don't miss anything, do you? Doesn't amount to anything. Claudia ne- sat next to him at one of Julia's dinner parties. You know what they're like. Mm-hmm. And he talked about freight terminals then? Oh, nothing much. Nothing much that you want to talk about, you mean. Out with it. Well, there was some talk of my going to Chicago and working for him on it. Then I decided against it. I I thought that finished it. Hold on a moment. Victor Carrington offered you a job, and you turned it down. (laughs) To stay with me. You nosy old codger. Don't you know there was more for us here? Oh, David, don't, don't try to laugh at all. I think you know how much this commission means to me. I'd like to tell you that your decision means even more. Well, thank you, Roger. Oh, no, no, David. It's I who thank you for many, many things. I think you both ought to thank Miss McBride. Miss McBride? Well, I can see by your faces that I'm going to wait a long time for the explanation of that one. Mr. (laughs) Killian, telephone! These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Why scrub and wash and iron without let-up? Why not work refreshed? Your men folks stop at that familiar red cooler for ice-cold Coca-Cola during work hours, but you don't need a cooler. Just keep plenty of Coke in the refrigerator. Then all you have to do is reach into the refrigerator for a frosty bottle. See how much easier it is to finish your chores when you work refreshed. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause... The pause that refreshes. Mm-hmm.